Hi, George here. And in this video, we're going to be taking this photograph and turning it into a color pencil effect just like that. It's a fairly straightforward project. And I think it works out really well, but it does require, as you can see here, quite a few different layers to pull this particular effect off. Several filters in here, some adjustments, layer masks, and so forth, even a change of background down below. Now we're going to be starting this with a photograph that I found over on Pixabay, my favorite place for finding photographs for these projects. But before we do that, I want to just remind you that my channel is 100% fan supported. And if you really want to help out in keeping my channel here on YouTube, a couple of things you can do. One is to subscribe to the channel. That really helps. And the second one is to give me a thanks. And you can do that. There's a little button right down there below the bottom right hand corner. Just send me a thanks and that can help to keep this channel going. And of course, if you want to learn all about how to use Photoshop Elements, the whole program, not just these few projects I do here, then take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And I'll put a link for that in the description as well. Okay, let's go over to Pixabay and get the original image. I'm just going to close this one down. I'm not even going to bother saving that. We'll start from scratch. Okay, here we are on Pixabay. And I just did a search for Women Portrait and I searched for photos. And it gave me a lot of pictures. A few of these you may have already seen in some projects that I've done, such as this one I've used. And I've used that one right there. I've used this one over here. So I've used a lot of these pictures, even this one right down here. I did an eye color change project using that photograph. But I searched through here. This time I went about 20 pages of searches until I found what I wanted for this project. As you can see, there's a lot to look at. And the picture that I found is right over here. Let's just back up a step. There we go. And I'll put the link for this in the description so you can come right to this page. Now I have an account here with Pixabay to make downloading easier. It's a free account. It doesn't cost you anything. It just saves you doing one of those CAPTCHA things each time you do a download. So I'd recommend getting a free account. And then let's go over here to free download. And we'll be doing this at the 1920 by 1280 size JPEG right here. This is kind of basically a six by four size image, which is perfect in Photoshop Elements. And we'll just go ahead and click on the download button. And I'll be saving it in here into a folder I have on my hard drive, which I just named projects. Just made a new folder called a projects. And I'm putting it right here. This is an easy place to find that. Okay, that's done. Let's now go back over to Photoshop Elements and open up that file. So file open and we're in the projects folder. There it is and choose open. And I'll just bring this up here. To have a good effect, where do you see the pencil sketch effect? You need to be zoomed in quite a ways. It's a fairly subtle effect if you're out too far. Like out here, it'd be kind of interesting, but you wouldn't really see a lot of the effects. We need to zoom in on this. So that's our first step is to crop in on the image. Grab the crop tool right here. And I have mine set for a crop of four by six inches right there. And it gives you a nice suggestion. Obviously the image is already at four by six, so it fills the whole thing. I'm gonna grab a corner down here, bottom right-hand corner. I'm gonna pull this in about to here. And let's just put her right about there. So she's mostly off to the right hand side because she's looking off to the left of the picture. So I have some more space over here and less space on her right side where she's not looking. And right about there, I think that's pretty good. She was okay. And there's our crop for this project. Now I always duplicate the background. In this case, we're actually gonna be getting a duplicate as we make our next step. So I'm not gonna bother with that right now. Hit the control zero keyboard shortcut to maximize this in our view area. And we need to separate out the background from our foreground subject because I want to change that background. This background is not bad, but we can do better than this. So I'll just grab the lasso tool here. Get my feathering set at one pixel, which is okay. And starting up around the top of the head someplace, I'm going to come in here and just do a quick little lasso right around the hair. I'm not being real careful or critical about this. Just getting most of that. Come outside to do the bottom and then right over in here. Let's get this around. And then clear back around up to the top again. There we go. And just cross over where you started from. And there's your selection. You also could use the select subject if you have a newer copy of Photoshop Elements that has that tool in there. But this works out fine. Click on Refine Edge. You see, there's my brush size right there. And that's okay for this. That's the default 35. I normally will do this with the red overlay. It's just really easy to see where that is. And right now, because we have this light colored hair on a dark background and a lot of little wispy stuff, what I really care about here is more contrast on the edge. Let's come down here to a contrast section. Let's change the contrast here to 30%. Leave everything else alone and that should give us the best results. In this brush into the hair. And I'll normally do a couple of passes like this. So I'll start out a little ways and then I'll work in. And we'll just go along and grab this. And as you can see here, it's doing a real nice job with this because we had a fairly good separation already between the hair and the background. By boosting that contrast, it helps us to get all those little fine wispy hairs. 
This doesn't always work. It really depends upon your foreground and your background, how well it's going to do when you're getting hair. But in this case, there is a good amount of separation. That's one of the reasons why I chose this particular picture, because I did have good separation in there. And I had that nice dark background with light hair. If I had a light background with dark hair, same thing. As long as you have good color separation and good contrast separation, it makes this particular step just a bit easier. And I also chose this pose because it's kind of a fantasy pose, which works out well for being more of a comic book look or a sketch effect. It just seems to match the theme that we're going for here. And we'll just finish this off. Now down here, I've had problems on this on my test. Looks like it's going to be okay this time though, so we lucked out. For whatever strange reason, the refine edge doesn't always work the same way every time you use it. I'm not really sure exactly why that's the case. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then take a little bit of cleanup, but not too much. So come down here where it says output to. I'm going to be outputting to a new layer with layer mask. And this new layer right here, that is what's going to be giving us our safety layer as well. So new layer with layer mask, choose OK. And there we go. This now becomes a safety because we're not going to be changing that layer at all. We have our layer mask, so our background is protected. And you see we have just a bit of this darkness coming around here. That is Photoshop Elements helping to blend this into a background. So we want to get a background that's kind of similar in tone to that for the best look. Now over here, it did mess up on this area over in here. We can clean that up. Most of the rest of this I think I'm okay on. We'll go over here to the layer mask side, click on that, look for that white blue outline. There we go. White shows, black hides, you can see it right here. The background is in black and it's hidden. Foreground is in white and that shows. So if I use a black paintbrush like that, it's going to hide what's on that layer mask. I paint on the layer mask side, not the image side, but the layer mask side. I'm just gonna freehand paint this out just a little bit here. It's just a soft edge, fairly small brush, 27 pixels. And I'll do just a little bit of cleanup just along some of the outsides in here. Now I chose a soft edge so that it has a bit of a gradient on that and helps to blend that paintbrush effect here into the background, into our hair area. Again, I'm not doing too much in here, just a little bit where I think that's the worst. And that looks pretty good. It's work out fine for us. Okay. Now, let's come down to our background. I'm going to be changing this background. And if you want to have this actual one without having that layer mask on there saved, you can do it right now. Just right click and then duplicate your layer. I don't think we need that because I have that background saved up in this layer up here. Let's come down to the background. I want to change this. And for that, come down to graphics. And in here, there are lots of options. I want something that has kind of blues and greens, which is what the background was. The background was pushing towards a cooler background. Let's try this one. I like that quite a bit. There we go. Even has some little swirly things, which kind of reminds me of a Celtic effect in there. So there's our background. Now it's too much that obviously has a bit of a texture to it, but it's too much texture for what I want. It's going to be too distracting. Let's go over to layers. And I want to change this a little bit because I want to do some changes on this background. I want to protect the background. So where it says background, right click, duplicate layer. Again, if you make changes, you, you should make a copy of that and duplicate that. So I'll just hide that one. Now in the bottom right hand corner, this little icon right there, that means that this layer is a smart object layer which means I can't change the pixels and I can't do a little blur, which, which is what I want to do on this. Let me just demonstrate that. Go up here to filter, come down to blur and Gaussian blur, and you get a warning sign here that you can't do that. So to fix that, let's go to this layer, right click versus background, copy to, and we're going to come down and simplify the layer that converts it from a protected smart object layer into just a regular image layer. And I can now go ahead and blur this layer. So filter, come down to blur, Gaussian blur, and just a little bit of a blur in here. I'm gonna set this blur at nice even five. That's fine. And I wanna put some texture back in again, but my own kind of texture, not the texture that was in the picture. So for that, we'll go up here to filter, come down to filter gallery right there. And I have this set at textures, and it's the texturizer right down here. And the texture set for canvas, and scaling is all the way to the top at 200% and relief is just a low relief here at two and lighting angle upper left hand corner. It puts in just a little bit of a texture so it looks like it's on a canvas. And there it is. Okay, that takes care of our background. Let's bring our girl back in again. There we go. And then also because the choices I made here on the background being kind of cool and darkish, we don't see any of that stuff happening outside. So it is real nice match to put our foreground subject onto that background. Okay, let's now begin working on the 
actual effect in here. And you'll go up to our layer, right click, this is background copy and make a duplicate layer. Choose OK. There's a duplicate layer. And we'll put our first effect on this layer here. Make sure you're on the image side right there. Look for that light blue outline. Go up to filter. Come down to filter gallery. Now notice right now we're seeing two filter galleries up here. The top one just shows the last filter that you used. In this case, that was that texture filter on the background. So ignore the top line. Come to the second line. This is the actual filter gallery. And you can see there is that texturizer. This time though, let's go up here to artistic, come down to poster edges, and it gives us kind of a nice posterized effect in here. Now the settings I'm using over here is edge thickness at one, edge intensity at one, and posterization at one. You can play around with these if you want to. I would try this set first, and then go back and try it again if you wanted to play around a bit. But here's what happens, the posterization, the higher you go, the more levels you get and the more realistic it looks. I want a real drawn effect there's posterization level at zero, which I think is too much. So I'll set that at one, which is just enough. Edge intensity will darken down the edge in there. And there's with zero, it's a smoother effect. I want just one, just a little bit of an edge effect in there. And same thing on edge thickness, just a single one. Choose okay. And there's that posterization effect. Let's now blend this into our layer just beneath. There's our blend modes. And come down to the screen mode right here. And that blends that in. So we have that posterization, kind of see the posterization effect happening in here on her cheeks and right on the eyes right there. And that helps giving it an artistic effect as opposed to just being a photograph. So there's without and there's with. It also increased the contrast on the image. Okay, so now come back down to our base layer right here. This is the photo layer. Right click, duplicate layer, choose okay. Take that layer, pull it to the top of the stack and let's apply a new effect on this one. This was kind of an interesting trick. Go to filter in the second filter gallery. That's the one that you want right there. And this time, let's close down artistic, come down to stylize, and you want this glowing edges. And it looks really weird, but this actually does work out. So trust me on this one. I have edge width set at two, edge brightness at 20, and smoothness at five. Choose okay. There we go, very odd. We're going to now invert this to make it a positive instead of a negative. So that's filter, come down to adjustments and invert right here. It's now positive, looks really strange still, but we'll fix that in just a second. Go up to our blend modes and let's come down here and do a soft light blend mode right there. And what that does is it gives us some of these nice harder edges. See a line in here and there's a lines in here. Some more lines right around the hair and so forth. If I hide that, you see what that does. There's without and there's with. It brings in some of that outlining, which you tend to get when you're doing a drawing. You tend to be accentuating things like outlines and that's what that does for us. Okay, now we need to bring in some of that pencil sketch effect. And that's gonna be some lines happening in here. And for that, let's come back down here to the background layer, background copy, right click, duplicate layer, choose okay. Now leave that layer right where it is, just above the photo layer. And let's go back up here to filter, come down to filter gallery right there. And this time let's go into brush strokes. You want the cross hatch, which is right over here. And it looks pretty strange. This will work, don't worry about that. And the stroke length all the way to the top at 50. I have sharpness at 20 and strength at two. Choose okay. Now again, we need to blend this in for it to work properly. So go up here to the blend modes. Come down to soft light right there. And that brings in those brush strokes that gives us that actual drawn effect. You see it really well right around the eyes. Let me just zoom in on that so you can really see that on the screen here. There you go, that's that brush stroke effect, the cross hatch effect, making it look like it was actually drawn in. Okay, control zero back to fit screen. Now I want to balance out the values. We went a bit bright on this thing with all these different filters. So let's come down to our background layer right down here. And let's put a layer adjustment above this. So layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels right here. Check that checkbox for use previous layer, choose okay. And we're going to be darkening down the darks in here. That's the left hand side of your black. So I'm gonna pull this in here to the right to see how the darks get darker. Let's bring this over to about 50 or so. It's right about there, there's 50. And it's just show and hide that. So there's without and there's with. It just brings back in some of that contrast that we lost with all those filter layers. 
leave the lights alone, we're already too bright. And then the middle control here, you can use this to adjust your midtones. So I bring this to the right. I can bring those midtones back in again as well. Bring it back in the richness. Let's bring us down to about 60, which is right, there we go, right at 60. You can also just type that in if you want to, 0. 0.60 for this. And there's without, and there's with. So we've brought back our levels in here and brought back our values. Again, we had to zoom in to begin with so you can see some of this effect. If we had this out for the whole picture before, the effect would be too small and it wouldn't be as striking. So this really works out well if you're zoomed into your portrait. Now for this to be really effective, you want to have something that has a lot of contrast, very striking images work out best with this. But it's just a real basic portrait. It's not going to work as well. It works out better with more striking images, more striking lighting, harsher shadows. Those kind of things really help on this particular technique. Now, if you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of this video, why don't you let me know by sending me a thanks. That's the button right down there, right down below the bottom right hand corner of the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe and take a look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements. The link for that is right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.